Hey, God bless you, my friend and sister Sharon. And today we are discussing the progression of your calling. Friends, we want to consider Moses. Moses, from the time that he killed the Egyptian. And for those of you that do not know the story, you want to visit the first book in the Holy Scriptures, Genesis, where you will find this story that tells us Moses was called to be a deliverer from his birth. And and there's so many details about the progression of this call that God had already ordained Moses to be a, a deliverer of the Israelites. But what I want us to focus on today, friends, is that no matter where you are in your wilderness, whether you're in the desert, whatever you want to call it, you might be that molting eagle going through a transition where you can remember a time you used to soar in the spirit, you could hear from God and you would move, you could prophesy, you would cast out a devil and not blink, not think twice, just keep on moving. You remember the times where you were just strong in spirit. Spirit, but somewhere in the journey, you have lost your feathers, your beak has become weak, and it's hard for you to speak. Speak. Friends, this is a season that God will take each and every person. When Moses left Egypt, he had killed an Egyptian. And, and friends, we must know that just because some of you have a past, some of you may have even gotten yourself in some criminal affairs, but God is saying, hold on, be encouraged. He got your back. Get back up and stay in the way that is straight and narrow. And and God will continue to direct your path if you keep on acknowledging him in all that you do. He will make the crooked path straight. But let us remember that the progression of the call of God on your life, friends, depends on your uh, uh, ability or, or shall I say your willingness to work this thing out, friends. you got to be about the Father's business. you got to set your face like Flint. Whatever your talents or whatever your gift, whatever is your propensity, God may ask you to do a thing just for a season and then he will put it on a shelf. Then he will give you an an another assignment and you want to continue to be obedient. Do everything that's in your heart wholeheartedly. And keep in mind, friends, when, when Moses left Egypt, he went over to the backside. He became a herdsman. And he did this for 40 years. From the time God caught his attention with the bush that wouldn't stop burning, but it didn't burn up. Friends, God had orchestrated for Moses to die out in those 40 years. You must understand that Moses was the prince of Egypt. He was a very, very powerful man. And once he had that awakening that he was called to be the deliverer of God's people in bondage, friends, it takes time to massage out all of our little bookie in a suit disposition. You know what I'm talking about? Bookie in the suit is that little sly manipulative way about you and you know how to do what you do. God said, I got to knead it out. I got to massage that out of you. I got to get that out of you. And some of you, you may have been a woman of power because you used your body suit to seduce everybody. Now God say, I'm going to strip you down. I'm going to take it all away and I'm going to deal with you, Moses, sister, Miriam. I'm going to deal with that mouth. See, some of us, we're gossipers and we're trash cans. We take it all in and we spit it all out. God say all of these things. See, see, in ministry, friends, you have to hold secrets. When we receive all of your emails for prayer requests or whatever it is, I am obligated to heaven to cover your stuff. We are not friends to, to ever take lightly that the progress, progression of the call is to build character. That see, see, once you begin to receive people's pain, you have to know when to 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 administer stern rebuke. Because oftentimes, friends, the reason people are sick is because they haven't had a good old whooping. 
That's right. Most of us need a whooping. And th- let me tell you what whoopings do. They correct you. They get you healed. They start protecting you because once you tell that kid, get your hand off that stove. Now, he done got whooped because that was the second time he was playing. I'm going to get it. Is it too hot? And, and you get him real. Mm. I guarantee you get him, get that hand real good. He ain't going to never do it again. So some things God say, I've got to get those propensities and proclivities, those habits out of you. Because at the end of the day, you are called to be a deliverer. And you must be first delivered from the three points, the pride of life. The lust of your eyes, everything you see, you got to have it. Some of you are slaving on your jobs and you won't let God deal with you because you're still trying to buy the house. Look, 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 friend, this you. You still trying to get the house with the pink, with the white picket fence. See, you, 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 won't, you won't come off your, your job, all that security. You're hooked on a house with the pink picket fence. That's what God... That's what you're working for. See, the pride of life can disqualify you and it can slow you down in the progression of the call of God. The lust of the eyes, the lusting of your flesh, where you don't have control over your flesh. You still masturbating. You still doing all your little private stuff. You online here, there, every every two, three months, you fall off into the porn line, the porno YouTube channels. Friends, look, God sees it all. He writes it down. He keeps up with this stuff. And this is where many are frustrating the progression of the calling because though man don't see what we do in private, God does. So God is dealing with the lust of the eyes, the lust of your flesh, and the pride of life. And the Spirit of the Lord says this is a big one for most of us because we are after the recognition of men, awards, and and people stroking our egos. And many of us, please don't misconstrue what I'm saying, but hear me today. Education has done many people damage. Because the pride of life is stimulated through education. And if you don't ground the the exchange of knowledge, because in order to become a physician, you got to go to school. We know that. But when you start demanding through your educational pursuits where everybody got to acknowledge you as doctor and you just eating all this pride of life up, friend, you go, ooh, you might look up crashed and burned. We'd be like, we're sister so-and-so, we're brother. Girl, he got that college degree. He doctor now. We can't find you because when you're not at work, you over on a psychologist, psych, uh, doctor, psychologist couch trying to get some counsel because you don't wandered from the faith. Oh, friends, you got to be careful because God said he's going to destroy the wisdom of men. And you must understand at the end of the day, the progression of the call of God depends on what you're willing to give up. Jesus said, if you are willing, friends, to come to follow him, when he says you must give up everything, he doesn't mean that you go sit off in a corner doing nothing. But these things no longer stimulate your heart. You're not after the pick picket fence. You're not after uh, some kind of $100,000 vehicle. You're not after nothing but the glory. And that's why God will tame you and train you and I to a point where you are emptied out so that the calling of God is your everything. And the call of God is always centered on the gospel of Jesus Christ, bringing correction. Friends, you cannot work these fields and not bring correction. That's why you can't be enamored with with having a best friend. How you going to have a best friend? How you going to have somebody that close to you when you are constantly, you listen, friend, when you walk in and we're walking this thing out, we are concerned about our friends, our family. We're concerned about their souls. And we're willing to give over that relationship to tell them the truth. That if you don't stop sleeping with that woman and you you a woman yourself, you're not going to make it. If you don't get yourself out of that bed of homosexuality, you're not going to make it. If you don't stop lusting and playing all your manipulative games to pay your bills, you're not going to make it. You got to tell them, friends. Oh, let me tell you. 
It will cost you everything because you have to call them out because what they consider good, God say, no way, not today. So friends, the progression of the call, it, 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 is, it is a thread of faithfulness to Father, to our Heavenly Father. The progression of the call requires giving up what you love, temporary comforts to put your mind on eternal things. See, that's that's when you know that you have come to maturation. Nothing matters but eternity. I will say this as I close this exhortation. Eternity is forever and eternity is final. Hold on to God, my friend. No matter where you find yourself, give God praise because but for grace, there go you or I. It's all about the harvest. No matter where you are, are you challenging those around you to turn from sin? Are you challenging the church people who are living in blatant rebellion against God. That's what the call is all about, preparing men, women, boys, and girls to meet God. God bless you, my friend. Till next time.